and uh, welcome to this uh, short lecture on uh, you know I, I wanted to just show you the uh, Colab notebook uh, where uh, you know you can generate these uh, summary statistics for data you know make some histograms and all that uh, once again there was some concern expressed from students that they don't know Python they're not able to understand the commands etc this is not for you to understand every command eventually maybe over the next couple of years you'll pick up enough of uh, Python and background to know all these things. You should know all these things when you want to become a data scientist eventually. But this is just to show you initially a flavor, a little bit of a flavor of the kind of things you can do today uh, with data and how to represent it, etc. Okay, so this is my uh, uh, notebook. I just uh, run some of these things. It's not uh, extremely important, but let me just run it so that I can show you how it works. So this, this, all this you've seen before. I've, I've walked you through some of this code uh, just to show you uh, how one can do this in uh, Python and in Colab. You remember the so many different ideas that I've illustrated, hopefully. Uh, the last thing we saw was making these histograms and connecting them to the density and how the density approximates the histogram uh, when you look at a uh, random phenomenon of different nature and how that density is important and useful, etc. Okay. So, we are finally uh, coming to the data part of things. So, you, you have densities and you have distributions and uh, things like that. Uh, but then what about real life data? When real life data comes in, how do you handle it? How do you picture it? How do you summarize it? How do you make histograms from it? That's the point of this very short lecture. I've used some of these results in the lecture itself. Uh, so, this one is just shows you how I got them. Right. So, that's how you think of it. So, so there is this uh, package called sklearn in Python. It's a very, very popular package among uh, machine learning folks for uh, you know various types of algorithms you can run on it. Uh, we won't do any machine learning here. We will just do uh, data sets from this. So there is this sklearn.datasets which has this iris data set. You remember the iris data set that I described in the lecture? Uh, with this just one command, you can load that iris data set, uh, at least load the package which will load the iris data set into your notebook and then all you have to do is this iris equals load iris command that will load the data into you. So this like I said this iris data set is a very popular data set in statistics. Uh, it is very widely used. So this is available in most of the statistics packages. Even if you use other packages uh, this iris data set will be available in some form. There is this uh, description for this data set and you can print it which is part of the data set itself. And it says, you know, 150 instances, I mentioned this, there are four attributes or, uh, you know, data in this, uh, the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and there are three classes. I call them 0, 1, 2, and here are the names for you, right? So, first one is Setosa, the next one is Versicolor, next one is Virginica, okay? So, class 0, class 1, class 2, in case you like these names, you can retain these names. Some summary statistics is given to you. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, it talks about Fisher and references, etc. So this is the description of that. Okay. So now, uh, what are the commands that uh, one would use to quickly summarize the data? So it turns out SciP stats, which we imported before, provides this uh, very simple command called describe, which will take the data set and then give you all the summary statistics. So, so I'm using that to get all the summary statistics and then I'm plotting the minimum and maximum. This is for all the classes. Uh, and then I'm plotting the mean, I'm printing the mean, I'm printing the variance, okay. So you can do that also for class 0 alone. Class 0, uh, you know, it's uh, it has to stop at 50, okay. So I'm, I'm stopping with 50 rows and all the columns, that's what this command means. So I'm, I'm taking data here only for the first class, okay, class 0. And again, I do the same thing, you know, once I get the, some stats, uh, minimum, maximum, mean and variance, and that gives you all these summary statistics. So this kind of summarizing the data is very, very crucial. Any other data set you have, uh, you go ahead, use this kind of functions uh, to get a quick summary of what this data is. In fact, describe will give you a few more uh, statistical uh, quantities which are of interest usually, but uh, you know, we'll just stick with this for now. Okay. So the next thing is to plot histograms. We've seen plotting of histograms before. Uh, so here I I've taken all the four guys and for class zero, I've plotted the histogram one after the other and set the x-axis limits to 0, 6, right? So this one just does that so that, uh, you know, you can compare all of them together. So you see, for instance, the sepal length is sort of between 4.2 and 5.8 or something, right? The sepal width is between um, 2 point something to 4 point something, 
the petal length is uh, from you know 1 to 2 or something like that the petal width is from 0 to I don't know 0 0.7, 0 0.8 right. So you can see that is the histogram and in different shapes uh, it is a good plot and uh, once again I do not want you to be able to understand every single line of this code it is just that there is it's possible to write python code very simple python code which will generate these kind of plots okay. So the last type of plots I introduced in the lecture were these 2D histograms and uh, there was this nice uh, bar 3D bar chart which I made uh, with some uh, you know it looked like this right. So you remember this uh, you know sort of buildings you know, laid out in a well planned uh, layout type thing you know it's a 2D histogram right you remember. Uh, so this is the commands that will get you that I am not going to talk about what these lines are I will let you read it up and like I said this you, you, this is not a python class you are not expected to remember all these python commands I will not ask you about them it is just that plots like this can be very easily generated with, with a few lines of python code it is it is not very hard uh, this is given just as a reference for you uh, to look up and uh, learn on your own. So you can keep one objective of your uh, python learning class and the other classes as you go along I should learn how to make these plots right. So that should be one of your objectives this is just to show you that these things are possible and I have also given you the piece of code if you play around with it search for it on the internet. Uh, half of the coding today happens first by searching on the internet for how to do something and then reproducing that. So that is an important skill as well you need to pick up that. So you can look at the code see how this is obtained and uh, you will understand how this works okay. So that is it that is all the collab uh, stuff I wanted to show you uh, from uh, this week of lectures. Uh, hopefully this week was uh, interesting for you we saw some uh, interesting ways of modeling uh, even real life data I would say you know how to think of uh, you know histograms plot them how to think of multiple continuous random variables. So continuous random variables are a big part of uh, statistic probabilistic models and you should be comfortable with doing computations with continuous random variables expectation variance uh, you know multiple continuous random variables how to calculate marginals conditionals probabilities involving these ran multiple random variables all of those are important skills to pick up hopefully you have practiced them enough for this week. Uh, we will carry on from here in the next week. Thank you very much.